be fulfilled which was spoken by the prophet Isaiah, saying he healed our sicknesses and bear our infirmity. I don't know about you, but we serve a mighty God. Oh, we serve a God that's able to do exceedingly abundant above anything we can ask or think according to that power that's working within us. Oh, God, you said that you have given us power to, serpent, to trample on serpents and scorpions and all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt us. And Lord, I thank you right now that no evil shall befall us. No plague come near our dwelling. For you have given those angels charge over us to keep us in all our ways, God. At least we dash our foot against a stone that they will bear us up, oh God. I thank you tonight in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord, that you've given those angels charge over us, God, in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord. And Father, we believe, oh God, that as we stand, and having done all the stand against the wiles of the enemy, oh God. Lord, we believe right now that we release healing. Right now in Jesus' name. We lift up Jehovah Rapha, our healer. Hallelujah. If you need healing tonight in your body, just declare Jehovah Rapha, my healer, your healer tonight. If you need peace tonight, just declare him as Jehovah Shalom, our peace tonight. Oh, everything is going chaotic around us in the news and everywhere we turn. People are talking about this and that. But I thank you right now that God has given us a peace. He said, my peace I leave with you. And it's a peace that surpasses all understanding. And Father, I just lift, lift your hands up tonight and receive that peace. I, I can say it's going to be all right because I tell you that the words say that weeping and do for a night. But my God and your Lord and my Savior is coming coming through in the morning. Hallelujah. I believe that. I'm releasing my faith right now. Oh, weeping may do for a season, but I'm telling you, your breakthrough, your anointing is coming in the morning. Hallelujah. Oh, I thank you. I'm declaring. I'm prophesying to the body of Christ tonight. This time tomorrow, things are going to change. Come on, somebody ought to feel the wind of change that's blowing right now. I'm telling your body may be right in pain, but I declare and decree that oh, this time tomorrow that you're gonna have your body to be healed, your body is gonna be set free by the power and the attack of the enemy, God. So, Father, I thank you tonight that as we lift you up above every circumstance, situation, God, we declare that everything that has tried to come against us, Lord God, curses, Lord, your Bible said, the words say. Oh, you, you became a curse for us. And it said, curse to anyone that hangs upon a tree. And you became a curse for us. So we break generational curses, hereditary curses. Oh, God, ancestral curses that's trying to visit upon our city. We break it in Jesus' name. Word curses that our forefathers spoke over our city and over our lives. We break those curses right now. Oh, we, we declare... Oh, God, voodoo, cough, cold, flu, virus, heart attack, stroke, cyst, blindness, spiritual blindness, physical blindness. Be bound in Jesus' name. And, Father, I thank you that the curse is being put up under our foot tonight. And we declare that you soon going to break every curse under our feet. Crush it in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, I give you praise tonight in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord, that we have, oh, God, a reason to lift you up, God, for you are mighty and you are powerful. And thank you for the, the anointing that's going to be on this service tonight. In the mighty name of Jesus, Lord, I pray, God, that you stir us up tonight, God. I speak right now, oh, every, every life that have been spiritually dead and physically dead, God, I claim the spoils tonight. I speak to the north, the south, and the east and the west. And I declare the enemy to give up and pay up in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord. For God, I thank you that you have given the church, oh God, authorization, anointing, and power. Lord, thank you that we are authorized and deputized to bind the devil, God, and to put him on the run. Lord, this is a church, the victory church, that is submitting to you. And we are resisting everything that the enemy tried to come against us. Plans, schemes, and plot 
we stand against it. Every thought, oh God, every evil thought, we cast it down right now in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord. And Father, we receive, oh God, the peace of God. And Father, we thank you, Lord. We're going to cast all our curls upon you tonight for you care up for us, oh God. In the mighty name of Jesus, Lord, we believe right now that you are moving in this place tonight, God. For you said what two or three are gathered in your name. There you are in the midst of them. So, Lord, we pull up on you tonight. We reach up, God, today by faith this evening and pull on your garment tonight. Pull from heaven tonight. We pull virtue down tonight, God. And so, Lord, we say, oh, God, have your way in this place tonight. Oh, God, be God tonight. Be glorified tonight. Oh, in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord, cause your wind to blow tonight. Oh, God, cause revival of fire to come forth tonight, God. Oh, God, the fire, the all-consuming fire, come forth and burn up the sacrifice that we build altars tonight. Hallelujah. Around our cars tonight, in our cars, we build an altar tonight. And, Lord, we say, consume it right now. Oh, God, as we lay it down, but, Lord, we declare, search us and know our hearts, try us and know our thoughts, see if there's any wicked way within us. Lord, when it's found, oh, God, burn it up. Oh, God, as we lay it up on the altar tonight, forgive Camden, forgive us, oh, God, for our sin, God. Oh, God, in the mighty name of Jesus, let revival come and let revival start. Lord, let revival waters flow tonight, God. For you said, out of our bellies shall flow rivers of living water, God. And so, Lord, open up the floodgates tonight and let the river flow tonight in and over us tonight, God, into this city, God, saving tonight in Jesus' name. The Bible said the wind bloweth where it listens, and thou hear the sound thereof, but can't tell where it goes or where it comes. So is everyone born of the Spirit, God. Save some lives, Lord, in the north, the south, and the east and the west, God. Bring them on the bleeding side of Calvary tonight, God. And, Lord, we thank you that we are claiming this city for you, God. Unless you build the city, we labor in vain, God. Unless you watch this city, God, we, the watchmen watch in vain, God. So, Father, add to your church daily as such shall be saved. As we call them forth out of the kingdom of darkness into the marvelous light, God. For, Lord, you have brought us out of the darkness and call us a raw priesthood, a holy nation, peculiar people that we are here to show forth the praise of God who brought us out of darkness into a marvelous light. I don't know about you tonight, but I'm glad to be out of that darkness. And I thank God tonight I'm not going back. How many of you not going back? Oh, God, we thank you right now that we have something to worship you for. We have something to praise you for, God, for you are mighty God. And we thank you for all that you've done and going to do to bring glory to your powerful and mighty name. We love you, Lord. We bless your name. Thank you for praying with us tonight. We love you. God bless you tonight.
in victory. How's everybody doing tonight? Um, I've just before. Uh, how's everybody doing tonight? Mm. Amen. Praise God. Um, before we get started tonight, I've got a couple of announcements. How many love announcements? Okay. Um, first of all, I am. Um, I'm very praise God. I'm I'm excited to announce that um, we have uh, got report that there has been many uh, miracles and salvations at kids camp. So praise Jesus for that. And um, they're having a great time. So um, for the kids that didn't get the, a chance to go to kids camp, we are still having kids church tonight. Um, you will go through the uh, doors, double doors right there. And um, Miss uh, Jackie will get you signed in, and she will show you where to go. And for the youth tonight, um, same thing. Uh, you can go through those doors, and you will have youth tonight in the youth room. Um, first door on your left when you get in. And then for the audience tonight, um, we're not going to be having service. Um, uh, our fearless pastor, Pastor Layton, is at Kids Camp this uh, this week, so we won't be having uh, uh, audience. But we will start again next week. So please join us next week uh, at six thirty for audience, and we will meet in uh, in the double doors also, and we'll be on the first hall, first doorway down the hall to the right. Um, so thank y'all. Hallelujah. Oh, oh, uh, one second. Sorry. What the, what, what the radio station. Okay, and sorry. Um, 88.7 is the radio station. If you want to uh, roll your windows up uh, and uh, avoid the heat, you can uh, turn us up on 88.7 and listen to us there. So thank you. Hallelujah. We got all kinds of different people doing different stuff tonight. Amen. <laughs> But hallelujah, we just encourage you during the praise and worship to enter in. We are just believing for the presence of the Lord to invade your vehicles, invade our hearts. Because you know he's with us always, never leaves us. So he's here right now and we want to give him our hearts in Jesus' name and our worship. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Who could carry that kind of weight? It was my tomb till I met you. Great. 
Oh 
receive, I receive, I receive. Yes, Lord. Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. Come and flood this place, Jesus, and fill the atmosphere, God. Your glory, Lord, is what our hearts long for, Jesus. To be overcome by your presence, Lord.
Jesus. Good evening. Man, that song was so powerful. So powerful. Let's all just do that. Let's just say, Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. You are welcome here. We can't do anything without you. We live and move and have our being in you, Almighty God. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you. Every good thing that ever happens to us every single day is because of you, God. Lord, we just want to say thank you. Thank you so much. I'm going to back up just a little bit, see if I can find a little better spot. <laughs> For just a minute, that sun will be down in just a little bit. Praise God. Well, we're kind of sparse tonight. I think they have over 100 people at camp, don't they, Stephen? Have over 100? I know they had 31 campers, and then they had about 31 counselors, I think, and then they had a bunch of staff, and a lot of parents went. And then all the, Stephen and the praise team, not all the praise team, but a lot of the praise team's up there. So they've been having great services. And, you know, what Satan sends for bad, God always turns for good. And, uh, you know, our speaker for camp this week was sick and couldn't show up. And so quickly we had to get really busy and find another speaker. And God just made it, made up. Of course, nobody is like Chris McRae. Everybody loves him so much. And he, nobody can take his place. But the Lord showed up. And provided great speakers for this week. I mean, at the very last minute. Uh, Y'all know Jace, uh, Dave and, uh, David Jason uh, that comes and does our uh, kids program every year. The one that lost his tongue. He came and did it Monday night. Wasn't that amazing? It was just God. He was traveling from Texas to Alabama and had Monday night free. And so that was just a God thing. And then to, last night and tonight, Chris sent... His, uh, one of his ministers from his church, and he used to be the youth pastor at Tony Evans' church, and so they said they had powerful service last night and know they're going to have one tonight. So, you know, God is just so good to us. I don't care what the devil tries to do. He can't win. He can't win. Well, I'm going to go ahead and take up the offering so the usher can get out of this hot sun. <laughs> They're all going, yay. <laughs> so, Father, we just thank you for the privilege of bringing back to you what belongs to you. It is such an honor to bring you your tithes tonight and to bring the offering. We are so thankful, God, that you allow us to be a financial part of your kingdom. And, Lord, we thank you for your promises that you open the windows of heaven and pour us out of blessing and that you rebuke the devourer and lord we thank you in jesus name amen so if you got an offering just stick it out the window the ushers will come by and gladly take it from you <laughs> uh for sunday is father's day it's also juneteenth day you know both of these holidays ended up on the same sunday how awesome was that and so we are celebrating big time Sunday. We will have a 9 o'clock service right here uh, on the parking lot. And then we'll have an inside 1030 service. And they have all kind of special things for the men. And I think, aren't they serving refreshments from 10 to 1030 here in the vestibule? And, and so... Uh, granddads and, and any men you know of that don't go to church, try to get them here Sunday. Tell them we're going to have special stuff for the men. And uh, the one who brings the most family and friends is going to get some kind of great prize. So anyway, we are so thankful. Uh, we've been talking about on Wednesday nights about ascending, getting closer to God. Us getting closer and closer to God. And isn't that all of our heart's desire? 
to be closer and closer to God. The longer we live, the closer we get. Isn't that our hearts cry every day? Lord, I want to be closer to you than I was yesterday. I want to be more like Jesus than I was yesterday. Brother Willis, don't you run off because we're going to pray for you in a minute. When I get to a certain place here, we're talking about faith. We're going to pray in faith. We know you're healed. We're just praying, number one, your faith don't fail, because that's what Jesus prayed over Peter. And number two, that none of these circumstances move you. Nothing, nothing that happens to you or anything will shake your faith, that you will be strong until the day that you finish your job here on earth and go to heaven, just like all the rest of us. Praise God. Because we know you're healed. We're not asking God to heal you. We've already done that. And if we believe when we pray, then he did it. Amen? <laughs> okay. So uh, Psalms 120 starts the ascending Psalms. And what they did uh, uh, at the temple was there was 14 steps up to the altar where they would worship. And they would take the first step up and they would quote Psalms 120. And the next step, Psalms 122. And the next step, and each one of these steps... It brings us a closer to God. So that's what we're doing is we're going through what these steps are. And the first step, Psalms 120, uh, it talks about first thing you do to be close to God is what? Get saved. <laughs> that's right. You've got to get out of the kingdom of darkness and get into the kingdom of light if you're going to be close to God. You can't be close to God in the kingdom of darkness because in the kingdom of darkness, you're worshiping the Satan. And so we have to get out of that kingdom and get into the kingdom of light. All right, so Psalms 122, uh, 21 is step two. When they would step up on step two, they would quote Psalms 121. And what this says is to develop a prayer life, a relationship with God. After you get saved, don't just go down and shake the preacher's hand and get your name put on the roll and get baptized and, that's, and go to church the rest of your life. Don't let that be the extent of your relationship with God. Start every day getting up in the morning and talking to God and waiting and listening until he talks to you. Getting into his word and knowing his heart and his thoughts. His ways are so much higher than ours and his thoughts. And the only way we're ever going to know his thoughts and his ways is to get into his so the a prayer life so if you've been saved very long and you don't have a strong prayer life then you are stunted your growth is stunted because you cannot ever grow past a week no good prayer life you have to learn to spend time with God and develop your relationship. All right, number three, Psalms 122. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go to the house of the Lord. Find your church. Find your body of believers that you were born to serve in, that you are a part of. You're an arm, a leg, a foot, a heart, a liver. Whatever you are, you've got to function in that body. Because if you don't get into a body, then you're like a branch that's cut off from a tree. You will dry up and die. If you do not connect to the body, which is connected to the head, Jesus, you will die. Your salvation experience will just shrivel up and go away. So get in a church. Okay, number four. Psalms 123. Just like the hand of a master, like we reach up to the hand of our master. I'm not going to read it because I'm not preaching this night. So the next one is learn to serve your master. When you get into the house of God, you find your gift and calling and you serve your master. You do what God put you here on earth to do. It's the only way you will ever enjoy your life because your gift is your joy. And the only way you'll ever be happy is to operate in your gift every day of your life when you get up. Okay. Uh, and then the next one, what we talked about last week was Psalms 124, is to be thankful. 
Look at all the things that God does in your life every day and be thankful. The spirit of this world is not to be thankful. It's to murmur and complain and find fault and rebel against authority and fuss and fight with your family and your neighbor. It's not being thankful. And so we've got to kill our human nature and take on the nature of Christ. And we've got to get up every day being so thankful for every single thing in our life, everything that God has done, and every single thing that we know he's going to do, all of his promises, and it will completely change our life. Okay, tonight we're going to talk about the sixth step. When we step up that sixth step, then they, they quote this one. Those who trust in the Lord are like Mount Zion, which cannot be moved, but abides forever. Like the mountains surround Jerusalem, the Lord surrounds his people from this time forth and forever. For the scepter of wickedness cannot rest on the land allotted to the righteous. Let the righteous reach out their hand, unless the righteous reach out their hands to iniquity, or, or they begin to sin. Do good, O Lord, to those who are good, and to those who are upright in their hearts. And as for those who turn aside to their crooked ways, turn back to the kingdom of darkness, you know, crooked is the snake's ways, the Lord will lead them away with the workers of iniquity. Peace be upon Israel. Okay, so tonight we're going to talk about Building our faith. After we spend all this time training ourselves to be thankful, the next thing that we have got to do is we have got to become people of faith. We cannot just wander through life hoping good things are going to happen to us. We can't do that. We have to put all of our efforts to get closer to God to building our faith. Those who trust, trust is the Old Testament word for faith in the New Testament. Those who, <coughs> sorry, who trust in the Lord are like Mount Zion, which cannot be moved. Now, you remember Mount Zion is Jesus and his church joined together as one. Zion is not just Jesus, and it's not just his church. It's, when, it's, it's like when a couple has a good marriage and they've worked on that marriage, and they're one. They think alike. They act alike. They talk, and they walk alike. Well, see, in our marriage, our covenant with Jesus, when we get married to Jesus, make a covenant with him, we take on all of his personality. He don't take on ours. He took all of our sins on the cross and destroyed them. So we begin to take on his personality. He is the head, and we are his body. And when we come together to worship him, that's Mount Zion. And the Bible says it cannot be shaken. It cannot be removed. Let's read that scripture. This is a New Testament, not Old Testament. But you have come to Mount Zion, the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, to an innumerable company of angels. I want to tell you a testimony I heard last week I thought was so good. Uh, Joyce Myers was talking about uh, a lady came to one of her uh, meetings, and, the, and, and her husband wanted to go with her, but her husband wasn't saved. He didn't profess to be a Christian, didn't really want to be a Christian. But for some reason, he wanted to go with her. Maybe he didn't trust her. But anyway, he went to that meeting with her. So when she got up to preach... He just started shaking. And she looked at him and she said, what is the matter with you? And he said, where did those men, those ten, seven feet tall men in solid white suits come from? Surrounding her, holding a sword up. They just made a semicircle around her and said when she opened up her Bible, they all drew their sword. And he was an unbeliever. And he saw that. See, we are... We have an innumerable number of angels. I don't think I said that word right. 
that's around us at all times. But we don't act like it. And when we speak the word of God in faith, they draw that sword because they carry out the word of God. And so we've got to become supernatural people. Let me finish reading that. To the general assembly, the church of the firstborn, who are registered in heaven, to God, the judge of all, to the spirits of just men made perfect, to Jesus, the mediator of the new covenant, and to the blood of sprinkling that speaks better things than the blood of Abel. See that you do not refuse him who speaks. For if they did not escape who refused him who spoke on earth, how much more will we not escape if we turn away from him who speaks from heaven, whose voice shook the earth? But now he has promised, saying, One more time I will shake not only the earth but also the heavens. And this one more time indicates the removal of all things that are being shaken and all things that are made, that the things which cannot be shaken will remain. Is your faith unshakable? Is your faith unshakable or do you lose it when you hit a battle? Therefore, since we are receiving a kingdom which cannot be shaken. See, we have not received the kingdom. We are receiving the kingdom. Every time our faith reaches out and grabs a new promise, we have received more kingdom. Amen? Uh, so let us have grace, and grace is the power of God to obey Jesus, by which we may serve God acceptably with reverence and godly fear. So, if we have faith, we're like Zion, which cannot be shaken. You know, COVID tried to destroy the church, but guess what? The church can't be shaken. I read an article last week talking about, uh, during COVID, why there were so many murders. In little, it said in little bitty towns, there were a huge amounts of murders. And the two towns that they wrote this article on was one in Arkansas and one in Colorado. Uh, and it said that when the pandemic started, that people had to stay at home, had to, you know, shelter, stay at home. And that, it, and that one thing that happened was people started drinking a whole lot more because they were so bored and unhappy, and they started watching real stuff on TV that they shouldn't have been watching. And people became violent and said, but the number two reason was because the churches shut down and people couldn't go to church. This was a national report done by our federal government why violence was so bad. In this little town in Arkansas, there were 10 murders and there'd never been a murder there. Same way in this little town up in uh, Colorado. Because the churches had to close for COVID. And when people couldn't go to church, we were not able to uh, touch people, administer to people, or have faith with people. So the devil tried to stomp the church out, but he couldn't do it. Amen? He could, he'll never, ever, because the church is unshakable. And our faith... When we have faith, we're like the church. We are unshakable. Okay. So then it says, The scepter of wickedness will not rest on the land of the righteous. Did you know Satan has no authority except what you give him? See, Satan gave the authority of the world to, I mean, Adam gave it to the devil, and Jesus had to come take it back. Jesus took it back. But when we sin, we give that authority back to the devil. See, sin is death. And when we sin, it separates us from God. And so we give authority to the devil to destroy us when we sin. That's the reason we have to constantly, every minute, that every time we sin, and immediately repent. You don't let it wait till the next day. 
I got to tell you this. Somebody told me the other day that there's two people in our church that have not spoke to each other for three months because they're mad at each other. That just blew me away that anybody could go to this church and realize that when you don't forgive, you can't be forgiven. That just blew my mind. I don't know if they're here tonight, but I sure hope the Holy Ghost is tearing you up right now. Repent. Make it right. Take the wrong. I was wrong. Whether you're wrong or not, it don't matter. You know? Uh, cause the, because when you do that, you give Satan authority. You give him authority in your life to kill, steal, and destroy. And he will kill, steal, and destroy. So, if you know you're right with God, and you, you know you get, you, you ask forgiveness when you sin, then you know the devil can't touch you. What's going on in your life is a lie. If it looks like the devil is messing with you, it's a lie from the pit of hell. One scripture I quote more than nearly any other scripture is, none of these things move me. If everybody in Camden hates me, none of these things move me. If my husband or my kids decided they were never going to speak to me again the rest of my life, none of these things move me. If I have not sinned, my heart is just as right with God as it can be. And so circumstances do not move me. Amen? And they do not move us when we have faith. All right. Uh, let's go to the next one. Okay, I want to give you six th things tonight to help your faith grow. Help you grow your faith. Because faith does not grow naturally. Just like muscles don't grow naturally. If you're going to have muscles you got to work those muscles if not they turn into flab you know you got to work a muscle for it to be a strong muscle and if you're going to have faith you're going to have to work your faith you're going to use your faith use it Use it. All right, so let's increase our faith. Number one, way to increase your faith. When Jesus told the parable about the centurion that came to him and wanted this person healed, and he said he was going to go heal him, and the centurion said, No, Jesus, don't come to my house. He said, I'm a man like you. I have people under authority. I, I'm in authority. I have people under me. He said, I just speak the word. And he said to Jesus, you just speak the word and it'll happen. Jesus called that great faith. And Jesus said to him, be unto you what you believe. So walking under authority under the authority of the word of God, under the authority of the authorities that God put over you, causes you to have strong faith. If you are rebellious, if you have a problem with authority, if you badmouth policemen, if you badmouth the president, the governor, the mayor, you're not going to have strong faith. You have got to walk under authority if you're going to have authority. Now, that, that don't mean you think that everything that they do is right. 
nothing everybody does is right. Nobody does everything right but Jesus. But that don't give us the right to not submit to the authorities that God has set up. And so when you find yourself walking in rebellion, I hope the Holy Spirit taps you on the shoulder. That's why your faith isn't working. That's why your faith isn't working because you have got a rebellious spirit. Uh, who is that big preacher, Jerry, that we listen to all the time? Uh, he, he's with the Lord now, but he has this great message he preaches. And he, he preached all over the world. And they were asking him in this conference. He, he was teaching on identifying demonic spirits that control land masses. So they were asking him what all the spirits were that control the different land masses. He was in New Zealand, I think. When this, and so they asked him, what is the spirit that rules America? What, what do you think he said? Rebellion. Rebellion rules America. Okay, let's move on. All right, so if you want your faith to grow, submit to your authority. Women, submit to your husband. Get rid of that Jezebel spirit and submit. God can't answer your prayers when you operate in a Jezebel spirit. And you do not do what, what your husband wants you to do. Don't be dumb. Don't spend three hours a day praying and then walk out and rebel against your husband. You just wasted three hours. When you rebel your authority, same way with children, same way with the person you work for, same way with civil authorities. Okay, let's move on. What's number two? I got to hurry. We talked about this one a little bit last week, serving in the house of God. You know, when they came to Jesus and said, increase our faith. Uh, number one was Matthew 8, 5. Number two is Luke 17, 5. They came to Jesus and said, increase our faith. And he told them the parable about the servant that went out and worked in the field. And when he came in, he said, did the master of the house say, oh, sit down, let me fix you something deep? He said, no. He fixed the master of the house something to eat and fed him before he ate. So what Jesus is saying is our life of service increases our faith. If you ever get to the place that you feel like Jesus owes you something because you've done a great job for him, that's where you lose your faith. He don't owe us anything. He did everything for us on the cross. Everything. He doesn't owe us anything. We owe him our entire life. Every breath we breathe, every thought we think is his. And uh, we are to serve him with our whole heart until the day we go to heaven. And that increases is our faith. Okay, next one. This is in Philemon 1. Know that the uh, sharing of your faith or the working of your faith will become effectual by acknowledging every good thing that is in you in Christ Jesus. That's a mouthful. Your faith will work when you know all the good things 
that Jesus has done for you and that he's in you. Joyce Myers gave this testimony the other day. She said about 40 years ago, she said her and Dave fought all the time and said that they'd had this big fight and he'd walked out and she was sitting at the kitchen table feeding the baby and said she started saying, well, of course it's my fault. It's always my fault. Everything is my fault. Just yeah, 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 yeah. And said she literally felt a demonic spirit walk into that room and start moving toward her. I am the righteousness of God in Christ. Jesus lives in me. I'm covered in the blood. And so when she started speaking all the good things that were in her, in Christ Jesus, she said she felt that spirit leave. How many times a day do we do that? Run our stupid mouths about stupid things and invite the devil in. And then our faith don't work. Instead of us talking about all, all the good things that is in us because Jesus is in us. You know, it's real hard when we really sin and mess up not to really give ourselves a good balling out, right? And especially if you were raised by strict parents, all you can hear is, you knew better. What is wrong with you? Right? Well, see, when we think like that, we are not acknowledging that the blood of Jesus forgave that sin immediately when we asked, and it's gone. See? So when we acknowledge all the good that is already in us because Jesus is there, it makes our faith work. Okay, next. Jude one twenty. All of you know this one. Build up your most holy faith doing what? Praying in tongues. Every minute you're not talking to somebody else, we should be praying in tongues. Every minute, but not out loud. Nothing bothers me more than people praying in tongues so loud in church I can't hear the preacher preaching. <laughs> That's not what we're supposed to do. I come to church and everybody just pray out loud all during the preaching so that nobody no. Oh, we're supposed to pray under our breath when the preacher's preaching. But when we are not with people, we should be praying in tongues all the time. All the time because it's building our faith. Okay, next one. All right, there was two things in the New Testament that always increased a person's faith. One was when they saw a miracle, and two was when they heard someone preach under the anointing. You remember on the day of Pentecost when Jesus got, when uh, Peter got up and preached? They said, all these people are drunk. Peter got up and said, not so, and preached, and 3,000 people got saved. From preaching. Preaching will always build your faith when it's the true word and it's anointed. So you should always have iPods going on. And uh, every night when Jordan and I go to bed, I get on my iPad and he turns on preaching. He has all these preachers that he preaches to. A lot of them are foreign. I can't hardly understand their accents. But we, we listen to so much preaching every night. I usually go to bed with preaching in my head. But see, anointed preaching builds your faith. I'm going to read you that scripture in just a minute. And then every time Jesus, he would go into a town and he would work miracles, draw a crowd, and then preach to them and they'd get saved. So I'm going to read you these scriptures on uh, miracles and uh, All right, uh, talking about the marriage kind of said, this beginning of miracles Jesus did in Cana of Galilee and manifested his glory and his disciples believed. When Jesus did the miracle, turning the water into wine, that it increased their faith. Okay. 
Okay. Got another one right there. Now, when he was in Jerusalem at the Passover during the feast, many believed in his name when they saw the miracles that he did. How many of you have ever had a miracle? Did you know that every time you tell somebody that miracle, you increase their faith? Did you know that? It doesn't matter if it happened 20 years ago. You should tell it to anybody that you want to help them build their faith. This is John 731. And many of the Samaritans they, in the city believed on him because of the word of the Samaritan woman. She said, he told me everything I ever did. See, that was the miracle of the word of knowledge. And when the Samaritans saw him, they urged him to stay. And many more believed because he preached to them. Uh, the woman believed because he used the gift of uh, uh, word of wisdom or word of knowledge. That was a miracle. And she believed. So she goes in and tells people. And they all come out. He preaches to them. And they believe. Sorry, it's taking me so long. So when the father sent to Jesus for him to heal his son, Jesus told him to go home, that he would be healed. It said, so when the father knew that it was at the very hour that Jesus said your son would live, he believed and his whole household. So see, when they saw that miracle of Jesus healing that little boy, then they all believe because of the miracle. And the ones that were told it believe because they were giving them their testimony, preaching to them. Uh, John 12. And when the chief priest plotted to put Lazarus to death also, because on account of him, many of the Jews went away and believed in Jesus. See, Lazarus being raised from the dead created faith in all the people that believed. Okay. I've got to learn how to print off my phone. I haven't learned how to print off my phone. Uh -huh. Okay, the next one is uh, in Acts 9, where Peter put all the people out of the room and knelt down and prayed and said, Tabitha, arise. And she opened her eyes. And when she saw Peter... I lost my place. I normally don't have problems with this. The devil's just mad tonight. He gave her his hand and he lifted her up. And when he had called the saints and the widows, he presented her alive. And it became known throughout all Joppa and many believed on the Lord. Because they saw a miracle or because somebody told them about the miracle. See, preaching increases your faith. When, G when Peter went to Cornelius' house and he preached to them, what happened? They all got saved and the Holy Ghost fell on them. And he said, if God has given them the same gift that he gave us when we believed on the Lord Jesus Christ, who was I that I could withstand it? And they glorified God because God had granted repentance to, to life. So see, when Peter went and preached to them, they believed, they got saved, the Holy Ghost fell just simply from preaching. Oh, there's many, 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 many more of these that talk about that when the word is preached and people believe they have faith, it increases their faith. So listening, oh, I know that one scripture there in Corinthians said, how are they going to know if we don't go? How are they going to believe if we don't preach? How are they going to have faith if we don't preach to them? How are we going to have faith if we don't listen to preaching? You know? And then it says in uh, one of the other ones there, it said, uh, 
The foolishness of preaching is what God chose to save the world. So the foolishness of preaching builds our faith. And so we should be listening. We either should be praying in the Holy Ghost, speak, uh, uh, telling our miracles, listening to preaching, listening to the Word. There, 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 there. Faith comes from hearing the Word of God. We can hear it, read it for ourselves, and hear it as the Holy Spirit says, or we can hear it when somebody's preaching it. We can acknowledge all the good things that are in us in Christ Jesus. We can submit to our authority. We can serve in the house of God. All these things will cause our, our faith to grow. Amen? <coughs> now, jordan has been telling everybody, the Lord has told him that in the last days, in these days we're living, the devil is so mad that he is really going after people in an unusually cruel way. And that the church has got to raise our level of faith. The Bible says we've got to assemble more in the evil day. That's what the Bible says. Do not forsake assembling yourselves together, especially do not be satisfied where you are. People get satisfied. Bastard. That church got satisfied. And when they got satisfied, we left. Because we did not want to pastor a church full of satisfied people. We wanted to pastor a church full of hungry people. Hungry people that want to grow in God and do greater things in God next year than what we've done this year. Be more holy next year than what we've been this year. See greater miracles this year than we saw next year. But we've got to increase our faith. Okay, so we're fixed. I'm going to pray and we're going to dismiss. If you've had a miracle, I want you to come lay hands on brother. See, whatever God does for you, you have that anointing to transfer. If you've been in Bible school, we study the transfer of anointing through the laying on of hands. You're anointed to transfer that healing to another person. So if you've had a miracle, I want you to come and lay hands on brother William and transfer and if you have great faith for healing, you need to come and lay hands on Brother Willie so that his faith will be great and strong during this battle. Because, see, we don't go through battles because we've done anything wrong. We go through the battles because the devil hates us and because he's trying to prove that the Word of God's not true. And so what we do is we prove that the devil is a liar and we stand on that Word and we believe that word, and the promise comes. Amen. So I know Jane's not the only one here that's ever had a miracle. Come on, lazy church people. Get out of your cars. Brother Willis needs our faith. He needs our faith. We need to join our faith with him and help him strong walk through this battle. Come out on top. Amen. Father, we just thank you. For the privilege and the opportunity to come together and worship your name. Preach your word. Love your people. Oh, Father, we thank you that we get the opportunity to demonstrate your power to this generation. We get to tell this world that Jesus still heals. He still saves. If he said it, he will do it if we believe it. Amen. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, we all join our faith with William. He is healed. He is not going to be healed. He is healed. He is not going to be healed. That's hope. He is healed right now, this very minute. We all release our faith. He is healed. Circumstances do not move us. We don't care what it looks like, what it feels like, what it acts like. It does not change the Word of God that He is healed this very minute. And in the name of Jesus, we drive off the demonic spirits that are lying to Him and trying to confuse Him or make Him believe that He's not healed. We command them to go. We bind them. 
because William Willis knows he is healed this minute in Jesus' name. Amen. I love you. Thank you.